Hi, are you ready to keep your Tootsies toasty while you step onto your chilly bathroom floor? If you are, we're gonna talk about radiant floor heating today. My name is Maria Lindbergh. I'm an occupational therapist, woo, and the owner of Stay at Home Solutions and Hard Time Wiping. So you are watching Toilet Talk, the show that loves pretty potties and hates ugly medical equipment. I come to you talking about radiant floor heating because this is something that when I have recommended it to people in the past, they kind of stick their nose up at it. They think it's incredibly expensive and not worth it. So we're gonna talk about it today. So radiant floor heating is a system that goes underneath your bathroom floor. So if it's tile or stone, they could probably do like some kind of luxury vinyl laminate too, depending on the brand, I'm sure. Check into that. Um, but it's a system that goes underneath the flooring and what it does is warm up your bathroom. Of course, you can put it in other rooms in your house if you are super rich and you have the money and you want to put it all in your house, by all means, go for it. But the bathroom is one of the places that you do wanna consider putting in radiant floor heating because of so many benefits. So um, let me show you a picture really quick of what I'm talking about, what it looks like. So radiant floor heating, it typically looks like this. This is heat wave. Okay, good. And so you can see it's just like a coil or just this one is uh, all rolled up. They usually come in sometimes 25 square feet. I think this one comes 25 square feet per um, roll. And then it has all kinds of wires so that um, everything is interconnected with each other. There we go. And um, it, they usually come with some kind of, um, you know, all the wires, wires connect together and they come with some kind of thermostat so that you can adjust the temperature of the floor, you can turn it on, you can turn it off, and those kinds of things. So the bathroom, in, in most houses in the US, the bathroom is incredibly small. So it really doesn't take a long time for the radiant floor heating to actually heat up the bathroom. Um, it's much better, I prefer these as opposed to like portable heaters. Um, I, I mean, portable heaters in my eyes in the bathroom are a big no-no. So those are the heaters that people stick on the ground. Maybe you stick, you have a room that's kind of cooler in your house in the winter time. Maybe you put it in there, uh, close the doors and it heats up the room. That's great. And they're pretty inexpensive. You can get them from anywhere. Hello, thank you for joining Toilet Talk. So, but I don't recommend uh, portable heaters in the bathroom because number one, the cord is a trip hazard. And then number two, um, you could accidentally electrocute yourself with water and uh, the outlet. Those two things just don't mix. So we want to keep portable bath or portable heaters out of the bathroom. Another thing um, that people can use instead of the radiant floor heating is heaters that are typically installed on the ceiling. Now that's fine, but those systems tend to be so loud. And for some reason when I've worked in um, these like uh, senior communities, some buildings like to put them into people's bathrooms and they can be incredibly challenging because you, you have people who, when we all get older, our hearing tends to tank, right? And so you're, you're in a bathroom, you can barely hear anything because you hear this super loud buzzing of this heater that's only located in one spot of the bathroom. And it doesn't do, I, in my opinion, a very good job of spreading the heat thoroughly throughout the bathroom. So it, you tend to be cold. So with the radiant floor heating, why that is better is because like I said, it's underneath the flooring in your bathroom, so it evenly heats the floor of the bathroom. And there's a lot of great health benefits to it too. So if you are someone who, like we're in Kansas City, our winters can get pretty harsh and cold and chilly, um, it, it's so nice to have radiant floor heating because um, what it does is it warms up your bones, your tendons, your ligaments, and your feet. So you're not feeling so stiff and cold and kind of blocky. So this helps with fall prevention because you feel kind of warmed up. I mean, think about it. If you were to have your comfy warm 
uh, socks or slippers on in the house, your feet are feeling warm. How do you feel on your feet as opposed to if you're walking outside and your feet feel like literal ice blocks? Maybe you feel like you're stomping a little bit more and you're just kind of trudging along. Whereas in your uh, nice warm socks or whatever, your feet feel a little bit more limber and uh, maybe they're rolling through a little bit. So the radiant floor heating can be so helpful with fall prevention there. If you are someone who is helping out a family member who has dementia, I actually wrote um, an article with tips on how to help uh, family members with dementia bathe a little bit more easy. So radiant floor heating is an excellent option for you because some people with dementia, they are more resistant to shower. They may feel really cold and they're not able to express that. So if you have uh, the bathroom set up in a way that is more uh, pleasant or more comfortable for your whoever you're taking care of, that can be really helpful. So I, when I've worked with people with dementia, I have um, found it easier um, for them to participate in bathing and showering. They actually want to do it when they feel warm. And if you have that radiant floor heating, um, making their feet warm, their legs, their whole body warm, keeping a, a towel close by with warm water, it's a little bit easier to help people when they feel good and they feel more comfortable um, being in the bathroom. So uh, let me, I don't wanna make sure I get all of my points. So um, I also wanted to bring up a point about radiant floor heating. So in my home, we do not have radiant floor heating in our bathroom. That is definitely a goal when we remodel because um, it's actually pretty cost effective and cost efficient to um, put in radiant floor heating. You're not having to turn up the thermostat when you're about to take a shower and heat up the whole house. You can just turn on the thermostat in the bathroom to turn the radiant floor heating on. And so with our daughter in this case, so when my daughter was a little baby, little babies need to stay warm, right? As soon as they come out of the womb, they need to stay warm because their little bodies can't create enough heat on their own. That's why people are constantly holding babies that's you know because they like that warmth so when we bathed her it was a little bit tricky because our bathroom was very cold so we had to you know we we kept a towel on her and um, to stay wet and and keep her warm but she was not as comfortable as she could be so that is why radiant floor heating can be helpful with um taking care of you know really old people or really young people too. So we had to um, actually uh, make a lot of adjustments and we, we did have to bring a portable heater into the room with her um, little um, uh, water bassinet thing or whatever. Why can't I think of the right term? But we had to do a lot of things and, and bathe her quickly so that we could keep my daughter warm enough. But if we had the radiant floor heating, we wouldn't have had to work that hard at it is my point. So I, you may be somebody who's thinking, well, you know, I, I don't want it to be too hot or I don't want it to be cold. That's a very valid concern. Obviously, if you don't want your bathroom to be a sauna, it doesn't need to be that way. <laughs> So I am somebody, I tend to be more cold blooded. I've got, you know, these, these bony hands. That's kind of how I've been all my life. Um, I, when I was pregnant though, I was super hot, um, or I felt really hot a lot of the time. So radiant floor heating wasn't as needed, um, uh, when I was pregnant, but now that I'm not pregnant, I tend to be more cold blooded and I need to uh, do things, wear more layers of clothes, drink warm liquids, those kinds of things to keep myself warm. My So radiant floor heating is kind of nice because with the thermostat option, you can make it so you are um, changing the amounts of heat to your needs at that current time. Plus I do have my husband who is, he tends to be more warm blooded he actually likes for the house to be cooler. So if we were to install radiant floor heating in the house, then he would um, probably not use that feature as much as I would, but at least it would still be there in case he were to need it later on down the line. So I, um, as far as finding the best kind of radiant floor heatings, I'm telling you what, this was a little bit of a challenge because 
in this industry, I feel like so many of the company names are similar and so many, and how they label their products is incredibly similar because, you know, they're created by these engineers who are like describing what they are, but in my mind, everything kind of runs together. So I found this website, it's called architecturelab.net, architecturelab.net, and I'll put the link in the description below, but basically they did an article called the best radiant floor systems in 2021. So I went and I picked the top three from their list. They have more that they recommend, but I wanted to talk about the top three. So the first one was the picture that I showed you. The company is called Heat Wave, and their floor heating system was the 25 square feet electric floor. So Architecture LabNet said, this is the, the best option. It's affordable. Um, it's an American company. The uh, radiant floor heating system is very thin. So it doesn't, when you install it, it's not bulgy or bulky. Um, they said that it was really easy to attach. You could put it in wet and dry areas of the bathroom. So for instance, um, if you're not sure what I'm talking about with wet and dry areas, you're like, well, isn't the whole bathroom area wet? They're talking about waterproofed. Like my bathroom is not 100% waterproofed. Only basically the shower is waterproof but the flooring around the toilet is not waterproof, so it's considered a dry area. Now, in, for me, for my bathroom goals, eventually I do want to waterproof the entire bathroom, but that's, that's another toilet talk for another time. But basically they're saying, if you were to put this, if you did have a completely waterproof bathroom, that the heat wave product would work well and be safe if it was under the flooring in the entire bathroom. So you don't have to worry about getting electrocuted or anything like that. <laughs> so um, it has, uh, the heat wave has a lifetime warranty. They send a complimentary thermostat so you can control the heat and it will warm the house in less than 30 minutes. Now, if you think about it, um, if you have a super small bathroom, it's going to take less time to heat up the bathroom if it's smaller and if you're trying to warm up larger rooms, it's going to take a longer amount of time to heat up. But um, basically, architecturelab.net said this is their number one for sure. Uh, the second one they recommended was called, the company is called Heat Tech, and um, their floor heating system is the 120 volt electric floor heating system that they recommended. So they were saying, here's some of the pros about this product. It um, the uh, pad or whatever is only an eighth inch thick. So that's great. It means that as far as installing with the flooring, that it's not going to be um, like a huge difference in um, height um, when you're thinking about the bathroom floor going out into like other parts of the house. Um, it's rectangular. It has a programmable floor sensing thermostat and sensor. So that it can tell which parts of the floor are working and which are not. Um, the cons they said are it only works best on clean subfloors. So you have to like vacuum the heck out of the subfloor, make sure there's not any dirt or dust or debris or anything on there in order to apply the mat on it. And um, with the mats that they do have, it doesn't cover the entire floor. So these are kind of more like rectangular um, pieced floor heating systems. And it's not like you can snip it and cut it and adjust it because of all the wires. <laughs> so you kind of have to, um, if you have a more rectangular shaped bathroom, then this one will work better for you. But if you have a different kind of shaped bathroom, that one is not going to work as well. And the last one I want to talk about or mention, but there, there are more. Um, the last one is the SunTouch Warm Wire Floor Heating Kit. Um, this one also has a touchable programmable thermostat. So if you wake up at five in the morning, you can program it uh, to turn the heating system on at 4.30. So when you come into the bathroom, it's nice and toasty for you to start your day. Um, you, it monitors energy use. So that's really great to know, um, if, um, how much energy you are using in the bathroom, whether it's too much, maybe too little, maybe, 
um, somebody's keeping the thermostat on when everyone's working outside the home and it's um, you you don't need to use the energy at that time so the only or the con that architecture lab dot net said is that it also only sticks to clean surfaces so when it is being installed um if you're installing it on your own doing diy you really need to clean that subfloor to make sure that it pops on perfectly so other than that that is a quick summary of radiant floor heating i will put like i said the the website in the description below so you can go ahead and uh, take a look at the other radiant floor heating systems that are mentioned. It is definitely an investment, but for the amount of energy that you're saving, like if you find yourself using a portable heater in the bathroom and you use it all winter long, so three to four months out of the year, um, that is a lot of money. Those portable heaters suck up, they require so much energy to run, so much electricity, so if you are somebody who does use it um, a lot, or if you have older family members, they it's harder for older family members to um, keep or to feel warm because their thin is their skin is thinner, and so their bodies release more heat than if you're younger. And so this would be a really great investment for the entire family to have in your bathroom and so that you don't have an ugly portable heater that's hanging out that could trip you and send you to the ER. So um, if you like this video, if you like Toilet Talk, please consider sharing it with a friend, especially someone who is remodeling their bathroom. Hurry and tell them before they do the flooring. And if you would please like and follow me at hard time wiping on Instagram. I also have a newsletter. So if you go to my link in the bio, you can sign up there or you could head over to hardtimewiping.com and sign up for the newsletter there. I not only talk about um, wiping tips, but I also talk about the best changes that you can make at home to live there for a lifetime, which we all have to do, right? We don't wanna live in a nursing home. So please do that. You can also find these Toilet Talk videos on my YouTube channel, Stay at Home Solutions. You can also find these videos on virtual care. That's virtualcarewithak.com. And um, let's see what else. If you have a topic that you want me to cover or um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Please message me, please email me. I am here to serve you. So with that being said, I will be back next Tuesday at 12 Central Standard Time with another Toilet Talk. And thank you so much for watching. You have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.